say, Socrates, the great teacher, said that you can't lead other people unless you can lead yourself. It makes sense, no? If you can't manage your anger, your anxiety, your fears, how will you be able to lead others? So leadership begins with ourselves, most of all. Today I'm going to teach you the three golden principles of Greek philosophy for self-leadership. I will introduce to you a compass which you can navigate in your life through any difficulty, because we all go through our own odyssey, like Odysseus, the Greek hero. How many of you have heard of the Odyssey? Yeah. Okay. So the Odyssey is like a metaphor for life. But imagine you had a golden compass, a GPS, to get you through anything. Wouldn't that be amazing? Okay. So I'm going to share with you this compass. But first I'd like to share with you a few words about myself. I grew up in Canada, Montreal, a child of uh, immigrant parents, Greek immigrants. To As I was growing up, my father was a bank manager. And when it came time for me to study, uh, and he influenced me to study to be banking, in, in banking, in finance. I didn't really want it, but I wanted to make him happy. So I studied in London, banking. After the studies, I, I worked in corporate finance in a British bank here in Greece and in, and in the Middle East. And as I was in this career, I was moving up, had a very good post, very good income, uh, was moving towards the executive, you know, managing executive, but I hated it. So I was having an existential crisis. At some point I was called in to do a big presentation in front of the board of directors and I, I fumbled up my numbers, I didn't do too well. And after that, I was so upset, so furious with myself that I quit on that day. And I went to my, with my, to my father, I said, Father, I can't do this career anymore. Uh, and he was very disappointed. We had a huge argument, Greek drama <laughs> style. I even got hit. Um, and uh, he said to me, leave, leave the house. Do what you want. Uh, there's a, a, an ancient motto the Spartans used to say to their soldiers before going off to war. It was tan y epitas. I want you to come back on your shield, dead, or bearing it as a victor. So I left home with like a thousand dollars. I traveled throughout the Middle East with a, a backpack myself, not really knowing what I'm doing. Um, Eventually, uh, I landed uh, with a group of Italians. I ended up in Rome. So I started waitressing. And um, at some point, I was very upset with myself. I, I had this thing like, why are you waitressing when you could be an executive in a bank? You know, it, it became very confusing at that point. So then I said, I'll go back. I'll go back to, I'll go to Canada. I didn't know. I just, on my... On the bus on the way to, to the Canadian embassy, I met this Italian woman. She said to me, are you, are you Greek, uh, are you Italian American? Because we were speaking American. I said, no, I'm Greek Canadian, whatever. She said, you know, I'm leaving my job as a teacher in companies. I teach influence and persuasion in English. And she said, would you be willing to take my job? This is like synchronicity. This is something like luck. And I said, sure, I'll take your job. I, I don't know how to teach. I mean, I've never taught, but she said, don't worry, they'll, they'll show you how to do the teaching. So this is what happened. I went back into Rome. Now, when I first got at that company, they taught me the method that was taught by Aristotle. Aristotle, many of you have heard him, a great philosopher. He was the first ever to write a manual, a manual on the art of influence and persuasion. And he had a very nice system uh, called Ethos Pathos Logos. Have you ever heard of this rhetorical triangle? Well, maybe somewhere in high school they might have taught it to you. And it's still taught today in the best universities all over the world. This is the, the method of influence and persuasion. No one has been able to really beat this system. 
He taught it to Alexander the Great, uh, who was a great influencer, obviously, conquering the world in his 20s. And uh, because a leader needs influence and persuasion, right? You need, we all need influence and persuasion, whether it's to influence our clients, our employees, our boss, even our children, we have to influence them. So this is what I began to do. I began to teach ethos, pathos, logos. What is ethos, pathos, logos? Let me just make a little diagram here. So we said it's a triangle. Okay. At the top you have ethos. So Aristotle says if you want to influence someone, you have to have ethos. Ethos means integrity, credibility, which means if I'm trying to persuade you to stop smoking, but I am a smoker, I'm not going to be very convincing to you, am I? You'll say, who are you to teach me not to smoke when you're a smoker? You don't take me seriously. So this is ethos, credibility, integrity. Credibility and integrity. So walk your talk. You have to embody what you're trying to persuade other people to do. Now, the other one is pathos. Pathos, you may know the Greek word uh, is the root of the word passion. The English word passion comes from pathos. It means emotions. Now. If I'm trying to connect with you, I have to connect with your emotions. What do I mean? I mean I have to make a promise to you that I will help you achieve your dreams of being a, a good leader. Or I will help you overcome your deepest fears. Okay? If I'm trying to sell insurance to you, right? I'm going to say, aren't you afraid if you die, who's going to take care of your children? Sign the lease, you know what I mean? I have to speak to your fears and your dreams. That's pathos. I did a little of that in the beginning, if you noticed. I promised you I will show you a compass to go through life's treacherous journey. Yeah? So this is pathos. And then there is logos. If I want to persuade you, I have to appeal to your logic and reason. Logic from the Greek word logos. So, I have to give you statistics, facts, a testimonials, right? So, when you combine ethos, pathos, and logos, you can convince people. This is the main thing. So, I began to teach this method to all kinds of executives in Italy. I got a driver. They sent me to Germany, to Switzerland, to France. I was teaching this method, influence and persuasion. And I really love this method because I could see a real before and after. In fact, I always use videos in my, in my courses. When they first come in, they're stumbling and fumbling. And then you'll see the last video I take of them. They're confident and persuasive. So there's a real before and after with this method. And as I began to teach this method, and I saw the positive results, something dawned on me, and it came to me in a dream. Sometimes we listen to our dreams. Aristotle believed in observing your dreams. He, he did the first treatise on the analysis of dreams. <coughs> so in this dream, the goddess Athena visited me. And she came with a big shield. And it had this triangle, ethos, pathos, logos. And she said to me, this is a guidance system to influence yourself, to persuade yourself, to make better decisions. So I was like, that's fascinating. The whole thing that I was teaching about influencing others, I could use to influence myself. And this became a method. I began to teach this method, the Agustis method, very simple. How to lead yourself, self-leadership, through ethos, pathos, logos. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to do an exercise to help you make better decisions using this method. Would you like to do that? So we're all in, right? It's called the Socratic uh, test, correct? Yes. Because uh, Aristotle was a student of Plato who was a student of Socrates. Socrates is the original 
Greek guru. <laughs> okay? And, um, okay, so the first question says, what does it say? In one or two sentences, write down your biggest complaint uh, in life lately. What's the next question? What do you imagine that the fear is behind the complaint? You know, we complain about something, but very often there's a fear underlying the complaint. If that fear happens, okay, if that actually happens, what you think, what you're afraid of, if it happens, what will be the consequence? Okay? We say, I'm afraid if I lose my job. My biggest fear is that if I lose my job. What will happen? I'll lose my money. And what will happen if you lose your money? You see? It, it's a digging. You go deeper. So what will be the outer consequence if your fear turns into reality? Okay? And we can dig even deeper. If that happens, what's the worst consequence that can happen? It's the worst thing, you know, that, that keeps you up at night. Right. It's all about inner work, yeah? Inner work. Now, on a deeper level, what does it imply about you if that happens? So I lose my job, I'm unemployed. What does it mean? It means I'm not worthy, right? That's the deepest fear about you. What is the deepest fear? What does it imply about you, your self-worth, your value? <laughs> Something about you personally, what will apply? So, who wants to share? What, what, not, the, not the fear, just what it will imply about you. Who's brave enough to share? What will it imply? We don't need to know the fear, just what will it imply about you? Uh, that I'm not capable. Very good. Who else wants to share? What will it imply? Me? Yes. Um, just that I didn't take enough time to like, be who I wanted to be. And then what will that imply about you? That I, I guess that I'm not worthy. Not worthy. You know, behind many of our fears is the fear of not being worthy. If you dig deep enough, it often comes to that conclusion. But there's other ones too. Who else wants to share? Um, so what the fear would imply about me is that I may be overly ambitious and eventually the passion that I have to achieve something will eventually diminish. And what will happen? What will be the consequence then? Um, essentially losing motivation and not being far in life. Okay, and so the outer circumstances will look like what, the outer consequences? Um, people looking down on me. Okay, and what does that, here we go, we dig right, what will that imply about you? That, um, that I'm doubting myself. Okay, or that you're not worthy of their admiration, right? That you're, doubt, you're, you're a person of self-doubt. Okay, you get the idea. So this is your main issue, that you feel unworthy, that you feel um, a lack in some way. This is the sentence, what we call the inner narrative, a story you're telling yourself. And I want you to pay attention because that's the story. That's the story you're telling yourself on a deeper level. So, now we take a break from that and I tell you a little story about Socrates and we're going to come back to the exercise and what it has to do with ethos, pathos, logos. So, there's a saying that Socrates was walking around the Acropolis, as he did, he was a real person, so walked around and a disciple rushed up to him, a student. He said, Master, Master, Vaskaya. I have something to tell you about one of our other students. And Socrates said, wait a moment. Before I listen to that story, I want to ask you three questions. 
This is okay. First of all, are you 100% sure that that story about that student is true? The other guy goes, well, I'm not sure. It's not something I saw myself. Okay. Is it kind? Is it something <laughs> kind you want to say about that person? No, it's a bit of malicious gossip, actually. <laughs> okay. And is it useful to me to know this? Is it useful? No, not really. It's not going to do anything for you. So, Socrates says, you want me to listen to something that is neither true, nor kind, nor useful. I'm not interested. Okay? So, very simply, it's an anecdotal story, but it does uh, exemplify Socrates' method, asking questions, self-questions, uh, reflective questions. So we're going to go back to our exercise, and we will ask ourselves the exact same questions. First of all, your narrative, I am not worthy, for example, is that story you've been telling yourself, is it 100% true? This is related to ethos. Remember, credibility. You have to have credibility and integrity even when you speak to yourself. You can't lie to yourself. Okay? Socrates says that we often deceive ourselves with lies. We tell ourselves stories that are not true. Specifically, we dramatize. Okay? I'm not worthy. Nobody loves me. I'll never be successful. I'm not rich. I'm not beautiful. I'm not this. I'm not that. Those are stories we tell ourselves. So ask yourself, is the story you're telling yourself true? A hundred percent true? Are you generalizing or oversimplifying or just dramatizing? What do you think? Being dramatic. You're being a little dramatic. Okay, it's good to admit. What do you think? Are you being dramatic or oversimplifying things, maybe? Maybe a little. Maybe a little. Sir, what about yourself? Your, your, the story you've been telling yourself. I guess oversimplifying it. Oversimplifying, overgeneralizing. Yes. So we have to have precise thoughts. We have to have clear thoughts and not our, allow ourselves to deceive ourselves. But maybe there is a little truth in what you're saying. Who thinks that what they say has a 10% truth in it? It's okay. There's no judgment here. Maybe somebody says, no, I think it's 20% true. Okay. Fine, that's okay, just take note that it's not 100% true, it's partially true. Now let's move to the second question, related to pathos. Remember, pathos is related with emotions. In Socrates' case, he asked, is it kind? Is this thing you're telling yourself kind? Is it nice to tell yourself, to keep repeating this story to yourself? I'm not worthy, or whatever else your story was? Hmm? No, it's not coming. Right. Now, if your worry had to do with someone else, like your father, your mother, or your boss, you may ask yourself, am I fixating this person? Is that kind of me to fixate him with one label? Say, you know. Just try to think, soften your thoughts a little, make them a little more flexible. Uh, try to criticize the behavior, not the person. As a leader, you have, to, you, have to, you have to differentiate between the person and the behavior. And in this way, you have to have more kind, compassionate thoughts. This is the second test, the test of kindness. And lastly, we have logos. Is it useful for you to continue to think about that narrative, that story? Is it useful for you to, to repeat that story to yourself, that limiting belief? What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. It may have some benefit to keep repeating this uh, limiting belief to yourself. No. no. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So eventually we want to come up with thoughts that are more truthful more kind and more useful to ourselves. 
right? So they're more well balanced. See, ancient Greek philosophy is all about balance and harmony, from the two extremes to reach what we call the golden mean, the golden middle. Okay, everything in ancient Greek philosophy is about this golden mean. So, how can you rewrite that narrative? I want you all to formulate a new narrative. Take that old story you've been telling yourself, those two, three sentences, and write a more positive, more truthful, kind, and useful statement. I'm going to leave you a little time, because I'm going to have some of you read your, your new statement. So I'm going to give you a little time and stop speaking. Write yourself a new narrative. This is uh, the life and work of Socrates, the great Greek philosopher. He would approach people in the, in the street. Uh, he was not a philosopher for the Ivy League, you know. He was a man of the streets. He would go around and say, what do you think happiness is? And he would start dialogue with this person. He would question him. Socrates <laughs> made people so uncomfortable that he was sentenced to death. I don't know if you're aware of that. Greek philosopher Socrates was sentenced to death for provoking the youth to have them think things and question things. At some point, it became too, 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 too provocative. So who wants to share their new sentence? <laughs> yeah, my new narrative is um, a sense of I need to respect myself mm -hmm. uh, in order to see others respect. I like that. So we can remove I need. Just say, I respect myself. Respect Keep myself. it to, I respect myself. Good. I love myself. I respect myself. I'm improving myself. Things like this. Rather than the fear, people don't respect me enough. Okay? When you catch yourself having a certain thought like that, you will exercise what in Greek we call prosochi. Prosochi means attention, awareness, <coughs> mindfulness. It's the Greek version of mindfulness, okay? You say, ah, I caught a limiting belief. I'm having a narrative that's limiting me, that's false. I learned it from someone else. Someone else called me that. I stop. So... I give myself a time to reformulate my thinking, to correct your thinking. You can correct your thinking, okay? Who else wants to share? I put, don't let the doubt from the world undermine your potential. Don't let the doubt from the world undermine your potential. How can we turn that? That's a good statement, but I would like to make it, instead of a don't, because what happens with the brain? The brain, it, the way it's wired, if I say, don't think of a pink elephant, <laughs> what does it do? It thinks of the pink elephant. Okay? When we tell our children, don't do that, that's exactly what they're going to do. It's like you're giving them an instruction. So if you can say what you should do, what you can do, or what you are, how would that work? Um. I trust myself. I'm, 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 I believe in myself. Something like this? Right. Okay. You keep formulating it. Who else? Sir. Um, I put, well, because, like, I put uh, for my, like, my, my uh, fears, like, not being, like, successful. Okay. And so, like, I said, uh, you already, or, like, not having a meaning successful. And I said, you already have a meaning in life and will continue no matter where you end up. You already have a meaning in life? Yeah. And will continue no matter what? Where you end up. You don't have to say end up. Oh. No matter what. There is meaning in my life. There is meaning in my life. And it will continue to create meaning. Okay, I think that's it. <laughs> Who else? A young lady. You're beginning to develop this thing of helping yourself and tweaking your thoughts, changing your narrative. So now, did you learn it? This is a method. Okay, you will pass your thoughts through the filter. Hang on, is what I just said to myself true? Is it kind? Is it useful? 
That's all you have to do. So from time to time, if you have an upsetting thought, that's all you have to do is just self-reflect, 